Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're truly thrilled that you've chosen to spend this time with us. I'm Telly Tucker, and I'm here to guide you through a truly insightful program this morning. We will hear from Path Forward's incredible team, led by Betsy France. We will be reminded, or perhaps learn, the facts around homelessness in our area. There will be an ask today, coming from someone who experiences homelessness every day. We hope that if you feel inspired and empowered by what you learned today, that you will click on the link in the chat and show your support. We don't pull any punches, we say it like it is, and we need for you to hear it. Homelessness isn't a one-size-fits-all problem. The face of homelessness is varied and forever changing. The role of Path Forward is to empower our clients from the streets to stability. And we know that stability means different things to different people. The Path Forward team meet their clients where they are, often literally on the street, and their goal is to build trust so that they will come into the Homelessness Services Center and take advantage of the programs and services offered. The work is more important than ever at this time of year. In the depth of winter when hypothermia is a daily issue, people can die on our streets here in Arlington, right by our nation's capital in one of the wealthiest areas in the United States. For many of us, we cannot imagine sleeping outdoors in the cold, but for some clients, this is the only life they know. Here is a reality check. There is no one specific face to homelessness. Hypothermia could mean the difference between life or death. We provide is not only life sustaining, but it's life saving. They're human. They're just like you. They just don't have a home. Please don't treat them like they're invisible. Wow, that's really powerful stuff. 29,850 meals served annually. That's a lot of meals and a lot of need. And of course, that's what brings us together today. We are united in our efforts to provide stability for people experiencing homelessness, and nobody is more focused on that than the person I'm about to introduce you to. Path Forward is fortunate to have great leadership, and this extends across the staff and the board members, and of course, to the wonderful president and CEO, Betsy France. Betsy joined Path Forward in February 2020, just before the pandemic turned our world upside down. Betsy is a visionary and absolutely the right person to guide the organization through these unprecedented times. While the rest of the world closed its doors at Path Forward, that was never an option. The community needed them and they've always kept their doors open, ready to serve. Path Forward stayed open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, even through COVID, because the need was still there. Their leader, who has embraced the vision of an inclusive and equitable community where all neighbors live stable and secure in independent lives, free from the threat of homelessness. Betsy is the organization's cheerleader. She speaks to the voices that are so often unheard, people who face unfathomable challenges and uphill struggles every single day of their lives. She motivates, enables, and facilitates. She mentors colleagues and staff to help empower people from the street to stability. It's certainly a busy job, but she wouldn't have it any other way. With Betsy as the leader, we can all feel optimistic. I'm honored to introduce to you Path Forward's president and CEO, Betsy France. Good morning, and thank you, Telly, for that warm welcome. When I think of Path Forward, I feel a sense of pride. I'm proud to lead an organization with a long and important history in our community. I'm proud to be helping the community that I have called home for over 35 years. I'm proud to be playing a role in truly changing people's lives. And this can only be done with the support and generosity of people like you. When I think of Path Forward, I think of a broad spectrum of services that we offer. We're so much more than simply a shelter. We offer medical services, three meals a day, nursing services, a day program, permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, eviction prevention, 
and life skills coaching, we truly believe that everyone should be able to live free from the threat of homelessness. When I first came to Path Forward, I remember thinking, how can a community filled with so many resources still have those experiencing homelessness on the streets or even in our shelter? It just didn't make sense to me. And then I learned, I learned that anyone could experience homelessness in any given moment. You just never know. And sometimes people, they really don't know what to do. They don't know where to find the services. And I saw immediately our need. When COVID hit, which was about 30 seconds after I walked in the door, I began to watch how our community responded so beautifully to those in the shelter and those in housing. But what about the people that were still on the streets? They weren't getting the care. There was a huge inequity from a medical perspective and we needed to fill that gap. So we brought medicine to them. We threw a backpack on our back and out we went to care for those on the streets, to give them vaccines, to care for their ailments, their wounds, and to build trust so that hopefully they would come inside the shelter for more care. You'll hear more about that later from our amazing nurse, Kasha. Thank you again for joining us this morning. Now on with the program. Thank you, Betsy. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you Terrence Toussaint, Senior Director of the Homeless Service Center Program. Terrence and his team are often the first people our clients see when they walk through the doors of the Homeless Services Center. So there's nobody better to give us some insight into the shocking reality of hypothermia, which is a major problem at this time of year. Before we hear from Terrence, let's learn a little bit more about the reality of life on the street. Hypothermia could mean the difference between life or death for all of our clients. Um, when they're on the street, uh, they need a place to be. And so forget about the rain, forget about the snow, it's the temperature. The risk of dying simply by wanting a place to lay down and sleep for the night. Path Forward cannot do this alone. Any vital project where you're helping those that are less fortunate, you need the entire community to buy in. It goes into that saying, as a society, we are judged on what we do or how we can help the less fortunate within that society. If we, we look back 100 years from now, it would be what did the community do to help those that, are, that were struggling, that are on the street? I will never accept the, the homelessness uh, situation. I, I can't. The, the minute you start accepting it is the, the moment you give up. And that's just not what we're about. We're about finding a way to move forward, to help as many people as we can. Building trust is a key component of our work. Without trust, you will get nothing done. And especially with those folks that have not been able to trust anyone when they came in. And now you're meeting these bunch of strangers who are smiling at you, and who are here to help you, but you have no idea if this is for real or not. So you have to build trust, you have to build a relationship, you have to have that connection before you can really provide life-saving or life-sustaining help to any of our clients. Path Forward cannot do this work alone. We need everyone in the community to be part of it. If the community is not involved, it makes it difficult for us to help anyone outside of our facility. If the community can come together and say, what do we need? Or this is what I can help with. And all those little parts from different members in the community getting together can make that whole picture for that person and provide a lot of support and services to the client. Thank you, Terrence. 
We're so thankful to have team members like Terrence that care so much about the clients and work so hard, particularly at these brutal times of the year where temperatures plunge well below freezing. Terrence and his team are truly lifesavers. I now want to introduce you to a woman who's truly inspiring, Kasha Shaw. She's on the front line with medical services for the clients and it's all about individualized care. Knowing that not everybody is comfortable coming into the center, the medical team goes out into the community to directly help people living on the streets, building the trust necessary to connect them with the resources that they need. It's time for another reality check. The medical mobile program is literally an extension of the medical and nursing services that we offer at the homeless services center. We just take our nurse and we go out to the street and see who needs medical attention. Building trust is a lot of hard work. It takes time and patience. Imagine having a stranger that you have never met before come up to you in your most vulnerable state asking you if you need medical attention. It could be very intimidating, scary. And so our primary focus initially is to build that trust. Just let them know, hey, who we are, we're gonna be coming out here regularly and we're here to help you. So let us know if you need any help. If they have medical issues that require immediate attention, it can progress to be a lot more complicated health-wise for them and may result in long-term issues. Our goal is to help individuals get medical attention or just regular access to medical care. Right now, we're working with very limited resources. The success of this program is very dependent on manpower. And right now we have a two-person team, primarily a nurse that goes out on outreach. And unfortunately, we can only dedicate a limited amount of time out on the streets. But what we're finding is that consistent presence, regular presence is what is needed to build that trust. So we definitely need to look at ways to build our team so that we are more present on the streets than we are currently able to be. Constant presence requires a lot of manpower, a lot of resources. We're using the success of the medical respite program at the Homeless Service Center as the model for our medical mobile program. We are super confident that we can make this into a sustainable program that can reach our clients not only on the streets, but also in the housing programs. But we know we can't do that without the community support. That is exactly what I love about Path Forward. The team is always thinking ahead. How can we best serve the clients? How can we best meet them where they are? The team is extraordinary and we're so fortunate to have them. Now I'm excited for this next part of our program because it's our chance to hear from you. We asked our community, what questions do you have about homelessness? Let's hear now from members of the Path Forward team with those questions. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie and I'm a registered nurse with Path Forward. A retired government contractor from Knock Community asks, is it better to give money or food to a person experiencing homelessness? It's what we all wonder when we see someone homeless. How can we help? We just want to be helpful. And so we look, what's around us? We're in our car, we're walking. Money seems like the obvious, but in all honesty, a bottle of water, a power bar, asking if they know about Path Forward, where we can give them so many more services than the dollar that you might give them will provide. We can leverage that dollar, and that's what we do with the funding that comes in from our community and from our other sources. We leverage the funding 
so that we can provide the maximum amount of services to our clients. Hello, how are you? My name is Daryl. I'm the day program monitor here at Path Forward. Uh, a legal secretary in Westover asks, how do people get connected to the Homeless Services Center? And at what point is someone ready to walk through the front doors of the shelter and say, I need help? People come through, uh, come through to the Homeless Services Center through various portals. Department of Human Services, Virginia Hospital Center, our day and outreach program. Uh, the police also uh, drop people off uh, to come through the Homeless Services Center. We are open 24-7. We do not turn anybody away when they show up at our door. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Goodson and I am a shelter case manager here at Path Forward. And I'm going to read a question from Jenny, a real estate agent in Clarendon. She asked, what does stability look like or not look like for a person experiencing life on the street? Stability means something different to everyone. For someone on the street, stability might just be getting clean socks and some food. Stability inside the Homeless Services Center might mean medical care and looking towards the future. And of course, ultimate stability is when we're in a home. And we also continue with wraparound services to make sure we can stay in that home. It means something different to everyone because of the fact that stability means being safe, being secure, feeling sound about what's gonna happen every day. So it's a continuum of care at Path Forward that provides stability wherever they are. My name is Erica Henson. I'm the senior PSH case manager. And Dan, who works in IT in Sherlington, wants to know what happens once you move someone from streets, from the streets or shelter into a home of their own. When somebody is housed, our primary goal is to keep them housed. Because we believe once somebody is housed, it's much easier for them to integrate uh, into, into society. And we do this through a number of ways, mostly case management which involves you know, coordination with other service providers, connection to families, uh, life skills, uh, money management, and any other services that are available in the COC or in the county so individuals can stay housed. But the ultimate goal is to keep these individuals housed and work their way to, towards independence. Hi, I'm Yolanda Littlejohn, Shelter Monitor with Path Forward. Question, Allison, a first responder in the courthouse asks, how is the organization funded? And do you have the resources you need to successfully fulfill your vision of all people living free from the threat of homelessness? The organization gains funds in several ways. Government funds, both federal, state, and local, all help us house people, provide case management, help us ensure that the Homeless Services Center is running well. But there are other services we provide that do not have funds that are government supported. And we count on corporations and individuals and grants to fill those needs. And an example would be the mobile medical unit. That has no government support, and yet we absolutely know there is an intense need to help those that are still on the streets. So through the generosity of people just like you, we are able to care for more and more on the streets, provide vaccines, care for their wounds, and build their trust so that we can get them to come inside and have a hot meal, and take a shower, and hopefully rest in a bed. Hi, my name is Christina Beasley. I'm a case manager for the Outreach and Day program. My question is from Jamie, and she wants to know, how do we provide our homeless population with cell phones? There are a number of uh, programs that offer free cell phones to homeless individuals. Uh, of note is when people apply for benefits, which is Medicaid or uh, food stamps, they can access uh, a phone which is just like any typical phone. It can receive, you can make calls, and you can access the internet with that phone. In terms of where do you charge the phone, I think we have an availability of places in the community, restaurants, uh, libraries, uh, public spaces where people can charge their phones. 
that has not been an issue. Hi, I'm Ayana and I'm the Director of Federal and State Housing Programs. My question is from Susan, a business owner in National Landing who asks, why does the Homeless Services Center matter? Don't we already do a good job with our homeless neighbors? So the Homeless Services Center concept, well, when it was being developed, it's being developed based on the one-stop shop concept, which is all the services are basically housed in one location. At the HSC, we have the shelter, medical respite, housing programs, day and outreach. It's much easier to coordinate services if they are all in one space. And there's also um, uh, economies of scale that you derive from having uh, services in one place. Good morning, everyone. My name is Porter. I'm the administrative coordinator at Path Forward. I have a question from Randy, who's a high school teacher at Arlington County Public Schools, and he asks, does someone choose to become homeless? Randy, thank you for that question. Many of us believe that, no, no one wants to be homeless. They couldn't possibly want to. And we've learned ways today that they can become homeless when they're not intentionally trying to do so. But there are also so many that are still homeless that are suffering from mental illness. When you suffer from mental illness, you don't think clearly. Logic is not part of your day. So to encourage someone to come in, get a hot meal, take a shower, could be daunting if you suffer from mental illness. You may not trust, you may feel very alone, and the streets may be the only place that you perceive you feel safe, yet we know you're not. So we try to build trust. We try to encourage you to come in one step at a time towards your own stability. What a fantastic insight and so wonderful to hear your questions. Thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time to ask these thoughtful questions. I certainly learned a lot and I hope you did too. At Path Forward, it's all about the clients that they serve. The mission is to support each individual from the streets to stability. I'd like to introduce you now to a very special gentleman named Barry Oliver, who has benefited from the services of Path Forward. Let's hear his story. I was homeless for a period of between 15 and 17 years. That's why after that length of time, you no longer think that anything's gonna happen because nothing happened, nothing has happened. It's 17 years to change your situation. You just don't think about it. You don't think it would ever happen. In 1990, I had my own apartment and I was working as a courier with a moped. And with a moped, I could, you know, I could make a good income. And I had three of them stolen within a period of like, you know, a year or so. And I had to go back to doing it on a bicycle. I just made a third of the income that I was able to make when I was on a motorized vehicle. But it still was not enough money to get a security deposit in the first month's rent. And then I lost my courier job because my I, I was just doing it on bicycles. And then I just ended up totally on the street uh, with no money. It was just like one bad thing after another. Every time I found a decent place, someone else would come and take it, and I would get pushed out. They would bring food, and they would leave the food, and they would leave styrofoam containers, and then rats, rats would show up. So it wasn't like I was only homeless. It was like I was homeless and I was being hounded. There's nothing you can do but take it. It just got to the point where I couldn't walk without an enormous amount of pain. I sat on that park bench for a year. I spent some very cold winters. Uh, you know, when it gets down to like 11 degrees, it takes you a whole, a whole day to be indoors to warm up again. I figured I'd be homeless forever. I, 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 didn't, think this would, I didn't think this would happen. I feel safe here in the center. It's, it's quiet, it's uh, immaculately clean and well run. I had been briefly in other shelters, but nothing compares to Path Forward. When Mr. Oliver came in to Path Forward, he was in a lot of pain due to his back, so he was unable to walk. His biggest need was medical resources, which our nurse practitioner, Akasha, was able to help him get started on, and now he has appointments scheduled for surgery 
but what he didn't think was possible on top of the medical services was receiving income again and getting connected to other resources in the community that could help him become stable and independent again. I was able to get cortisone shots for the herniated disc, which allowed me to like be able to use crutches instead of like being in this chair all the time. There's breakfast and there's lunch and there's dinner and uh, yeah, the food the food is very good. I've pretty much do, been doing two or three meals a day. It keeps me from uh, having to search for food and scrounge for food like I did for so many years. I believe Path Forward has done a lot to help restore Mr. Oliver's dignity. Not being able to provide for yourself and not being able to have a proper place to sleep, to shower, to brush your teeth, to shave. By regaining all of those things, by coming into the Path Forward shelter, he's able to feel human again. We are on the path for housing for Mr. Oliver. We are working to get him his own apartment. When he first came into shelter, he told me he didn't think that would be possible here because it's too expensive. But with the resources, uh, help from the county and our, the help here at Path Forward, we plan to get him into his own unit. And at the same time, hopefully these surgeries will help with his back pain so that he can walk again and not have to experience that daily pain, which he's currently experiencing. I was thinking that, you know, that it was the end because I was at the stage of being outdoors for so long, I had no feeling in my legs and my feet. I couldn't walk around, so it was pretty much, it, was, it would have been the end. My goal for next year is to be able to walk around on my own without, uh, you know, without pain, without an enormous amount of pain and without, you know, crutches and canes and chairs and stuff. It seems possible. It seems very possible now, where not long ago it was just, it was an impossibility. I didn't know what was going to happen. Pass forward has absolutely saved my life. Absolutely. What a story, and what an amazing gentleman. Barry Oliver is a wonderful example of somebody who's benefited from the services available and is now feeling positive about the future. We wish you all the very best as you continue on your journey, Barry, and thank you for sharing your story with us today. Now, as we're reaching the conclusion of our program, I'd like to reintroduce Terrence Toussaint, who has a special message for you. You have heard from Betsy, whose leadership we are glad to welcome and look forward to our future where we can empower individuals from the streets to stability. But this cannot be done alone. Path Forward needs you. You empower the community with your generosity, your compassion enriches the clients' lives, and everyone at Path Forward is deeply grateful. Now, I'm asking you from my heart to invest in Path Forward and make a significant impact to those experiencing homelessness. We can change lives, we can stabilize lives, and we can save lives, but we need your support. Every gift makes a difference. No gift is too small, and every gift is deeply appreciated. To give, you simply need to click on the link portal in the chat box to the right, or you can go online to pathforwardva.org and make a gift by credit card. And if it's easier, you can send us a gift in the mail. Your gift will help support individuals in need. Thank you for supporting Path Forward. Thank you to everyone watching. I'd just like to repeat Terrence's words, no gift is too small. We cannot do our work without your support, so please know how much we appreciate you. I can assure you, every gift will be put to good use. Although this past year has been a tough one, we're excited about our bright future and path forward. Back to Telly. Thank you, Betsy. 
That's it, folks. That wraps up our program today. You've heard stories that I hope have moved and educated you. And now it's time to take action. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for joining us for our virtual breakfast. We wish you a happy and healthy rest of the year, and we look forward to your continued support. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.